number 10. Lead in Sky is an upcoming single-player horror game that heavily emphasizes atmosphere, storytelling, and its unique visual art style, drawing inspiration from games like Metro and Stalker. The game takes place in 2005 in Poland and revolves around a modified power plant that has been causing anomalies. You'll face a number of obstacles in your way, including enemy soldiers and nightmarish monsters. You can check the game out on itch.io. Number 9 Get ready to dribble like Michael Jordan. If he dribbled random objects in the sky to try to get to the end of the map. Okay, it might not be like Mike, but Sky Dribble asks you to dribble various objects like a box, can, robot, and toy seal to the end goal. It's really a simple but difficult object parkour that will likely frustrate you despite how easy it seems. You can play Sky Dribble right now on Steam. Number eight. Water shaders are awesome especially when they are well done and look like this. This water shader add-on showed up on Reddit this week after being ported to Gato 4.1. It boasts a number of features including Gerstner waves, foam, shore foam, refraction, Fresnel, depth fog, and more. And it's free to download on GitHub, so check it out. Number 7 100 Steps is a roguelike tower crawler in a fantasy board game setting. In search of glory, you have accepted the god's devious challenge of climbing the tower. Gear up and enter the tower with only 100 steps to make it to the top. Gain permanent upgrades each run and try again to reach new heights and earn more upgrades. You can wishlist it right now on Steam. Number 6 Ram or Random Access Mayhem is a top-down roguelike shooter with no player character. You take the role of a bodiless AI programmed for violence. Seize control of diverse robotic enemies, turn them against each other in frantically paced combat, and fluidly swap to fresh hosts as old ones collapse in smoldering rubble. In RAM, no host lasts long, so you need to swap quickly to cheat death. Number 5 Sound is important. Without it, games just wouldn't feel the same, and thankfully, Gato creators have tools like the newly released WI's Gato integration to bring awesome audio capability to their games. The GD extension-based WI's wrapper is now available, adding new audio features to the engine and connecting Audio Kinetics WI's audio middleware to Gato 4.1.1 and above. Number four. The Diner is a short, experimental, atmospheric indie horror game created as a prototype to test Gato 4's rendering. You play as Holly, a college student who is called by a friend she hasn't seen in years. You go to meet up at the local diner, but things seem very off. With lots of interaction and a rich horror atmosphere, you'll need to survive the roughly 15 minutes it takes to discover the truth. Number three. A unique blend of platforming and turn-based combat. In Bernard, you shoot with a bow and use cards to outsmart your enemies. Explore, find secrets, collect artifacts, improve your archery skills, and be smart while using the over 60 cards in turn-based combat. With five biomes and handcrafted levels, you'll also need to solve puzzles with your trusty bow. Number two. In number two, Film Noir meets 2D story adventure in MS Salmon. Help the crime do is solve a murder on a luxury liner as you gather evidence and uncover the truth about your own dark past. Told in a gritty 1960s crime style, you'll solve puzzles, play mini games, and progress the story with quick time events. But you must move quickly before the ship docks in 72 hours and the killer escapes. And before we get to our number one spot, congrats to last week's winner, Koyura, earning a place in our 2023 Gato Project of the Year tournament. And don't forget to vote for your favorite in the comments below. And number one. Okay, I might be breaking a rule here. You see, Sandfire was already featured a long time ago, like episode six or something. But I saw this video on Twitter and wow. The developers showed off a new sandstorm effect to keep players in the play area. And there are so many visual things that I love about this clip. The game is looking great and I'm definitely looking forward to more regarding Sandfire. So which number this week was your favorite? Vote down below in the comments and for more indie games and projects, you can check out another episode of This Week in Gato.